energy modeling tutorial using Ladybug and Honeybee. And you can see on this, their homepage, there's this constellation of uh, different programs and engines and interfaces that surround Ladybug, Honeybee, Butterfly, etc., Dragonfly. Uh, but we're going to concentrate on Honeybee and specifically its relationship to Energy Plus and Open Studio in this series of tutorials. And uh, I'm going to assume that you know how to install it okay, you've got it installed. And uh, this will be on version 1.4, which is not the most up to date but it is one that I have troubleshooted, troubleshot, and um, I think it's, it's okay. So another thing before I start, I wanted to mention is this the repository for um, uh, templates, which um, the makers of Lady Bee, Ladybug and Honeybee have published. It's called Hydra. You can find it here at hydrashare.github.io and it's a phenomenal repository of different um, uh, different types of templates for simulation of energy, daylight, uh, electric light, all kinds of different stuff. So um, that is not what we're going to talk about here. I'm going to show you how to make your own template from scratch. And to do that, I'm going to start in a window in Grasshopper and we'll get started right away. So the first thing I do is I like to start from the end because that helps me to see where I'm going. So in Honeybee, I'm going to go, oops, I'm sorry, in Honeybee um, Energy, HB Energy, I'm going to go to Simulate because ultimately that's where I'm going to get to. And I'm going to um, drop this Honeybee model to OSM. OSM stands for Open Studio Model. And you can see right away, this takes a whole bunch of different inputs, and um, that's a starting point. The first input it needs is a model, and uh, to make that model, I'm going to go over to Honeybee and grab this uh, component, HB model. The first thing I do is just plug that right in there. Now, in turn, this component needs a whole bunch of things, including uh, rooms and to generate a room I'm going to go over to Honeybee uh, HB room from solid drop that on the canvas connect the room and you can see the first input that this needs is this geometry so I'm going to go over to my canvas in uh, Rhino I'm going to make sure I'm on I'm in metric because that will be useful down the road and then I'm going to make a zone that's 10 meters by 20 meters uh, in plan and then it's going to be three meters high so there's my my zone as a rectangular solid uh, very simple um, by default the y-axis in up is north and we'll get to changing that in a second. So there's my zone and I'm going to make a geometry. This is a native uh, grasshopper component called geometry. With this selected, I'm going to right click, select one geometry. Good. I'm going to hook this up to there. And now I've got geometry. This is going to output to a room. It's automatically named it room 13. Uh, this is the model, automatically named it unnamed, but it is uh, a model that's output. And then this says I still need uh, to hook up an EPW file. I'm going to put a, um, a file path in here. I'm going to try and find on my desktop a file path to one of the weather files we made in the last week's tutorial. So that's the file path and then I need to put in the EPW file which is going to be this 2050 climate change model there 
I'm going to hook that up to the EPW. And then the other thing I need is to write the file. So I don't need to worry about all this for now. I'm going to write the file with a Boolean toggle. I've got one right here. And now I should be good to go. Uh, if I just write this, it, it will write the files without actually running them. I also want to run them. So I'm going to press, press true. And when I do that, I should get a series of screens that pops up. You can see that here. And they just went away. <laughs> and now it should be uh, giving me a report. So I'm going to hook up this to the report and oh I think I, I think I accidentally hit this twice and try to just hit this once this time yeah so here it's running again there's the second page now uh, it finished I get a report and it's a very long report with a whole bunch of different warnings uh, I need to be careful and read through this. I'm going to skip down to the bottom though so you can see I have 14 warnings and zero severe errors. Um, seven of the warnings have to do with the sizing error and I'll explain this in more detail a little bit later but this looks like it's good to go. If you get a severe error in all likelihood your results even if it gives you results are compromised. If it gives you a warning more than likely it's okay but you do need to go back and read the warnings and make sure that uh, they're not serious or affect the file. Um, I'll, I'll go over that in a little bit more detail later. Um, but for now, I just want to get to visualizing these results. So I'm going to go to Ladybug, or sorry, I'm going to go to Honeybee Energy, and I'm going to go to Results, and I'm going to read the end use intensity. Um, and I need to hook up the SQL file there. And uh, out of this, I should get an EUI of, this is now in kilowatt hours per square meter, 83.67. Or I can get an end use, uh, or it's an EUI by end use. It's giving me four numbers. To find out what those four numbers are, I'm going to hook up this. And there you go. There's heating, cooling, lighting, and equipment. Um, if you're wondering why we have so little heating and cooling, it's probably because our um, model has no windows in it. We'll, we'll get to adding windows in a bit. Um, so that is how to make a model in a nutshell. In the next tutorial, we'll go over a little bit more detail how to add some detail to this, including uh, windows and shade. Thank mm -hmm. you.